separated because he's yours from this state. Okay, thank you. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Burkett. Uh, I'm here with my fellow teammate Belalem. Today uh, we'll give you an overview of how to start the project uh, in React and what are the basic concepts related to React. And we'll cover some of the concepts and see some uh, examples regarding that. Uh, so basically, we'll start with some introduction parts with React and we'll go and see some implementations examples and we'll cover these concepts in the next 15 minutes. So basically React is a free and open source front end JavaScript library and it's used for creating your UI components based uh, user interfaces. And it's basically maintained by Meta, previously Facebook, along with a community of individuals, developers, and organizations. Uh, like many people uh, like React for its simplicity uh, and like it, it is easy to use and its flexibility because it offers reusable components. Uh, it's much more easier to use. And the other thing is its performance because it's most like it is a dilemma, but it mostly uses the virtual DOM, so it helps uh, in the performance. And because it provides also a component, it is much more of uh, like a tool most developers use nowadays to build uh, front in the front end apps. And uh, the other thing is like how we are going to start uh, like building our React app or like how we are going to start. The first is uh, we, we need to have a, these two requirements need to be fulfilled. The first one is not, you need to have an old version, which is more like as a great example to 14 and an NPM version of 5.6. So if, if you have those or you can update using NPM upgrade or something, if you have those requirements fulfilled, you can go and uh, create your React app. So creating a React app manual is complicated and time consuming because uh, when you create uh, React app, you need to uh, like give configuration files like the bubble and other uh, configuration files you need to configure by your own. So basically what you will do is most of the time for creating a React app simply is uh, using NPX or uh, like create React app, which is either you can do it using Yarn or NPX. So basically you can like with the configuration and the pre-installed pre comp uh, installed modules, you can create React app using NPX create, create React app or Yarn create app React app. So the main difference between NPM and Yarn is like the how they install the package, like uh, the package installation process. Uh, like Yarn installs the package in parallel. Uh, like inst instead, it is more optimized to fetch and install multiple packages at once when you are using Yarn. But when you come to NPM, it's uh, serial installation. I think now it's like NPM also moving to that direction, like being able to install uh, packages parallelly. But the, ba the basic difference between those is this, you can use either of them. Uh, and uh, most of the time when you are building a React app, uh, you, you directly use JavaScript. But if you want to use TypeScript in your uh, in your React app, you can use, you can add the template part where you can specify to add uh, templates uh, to use the type script co the configuration will be also uh, integrated on your create react app files. So the next part we will see is the directory structure of the react app when you uh, create uh, using this command when you create this when you create a react app it will have this folder structure uh, node modules public SRC and other files. So the node modules folder contains all of our dependencies and, it's, and this folder is, is ignored because uh, when we set up uh, source control, but it's, it's an important note that the package JSON, like the one that you have in here, will uh, have uh, uh, the list of installed uh, modules, uh, in, uh, installed packages that you have in the node modules and you can uh, uh, work like when you publish your app 
or the like when in the git source or when you move it to a repository other than yours or when you send to other people people you don't need to pass these node module files instead you can pass the source files to the public and the package yourself and when that person gets this file you can directly install uh, the package that are needed uh, for running the app so basically node modules will be uh, will not be uh, like tracked by your uh, version control or any other means so if you delete the node modules uh, folder uh, the application will break uh, because you no longer have your dependencies uh, because everything that you call from like importing and everything will be fetched from the node modules and if you delete those values uh, you will not be able to properly function the app uh, the reinstall to install these dependencies just simply running any pm install will do so if the package .json file is still there the next part is the public folder uh, next to the node modules or uh, like most of the majority of the work that you will do in react is will be done in the src folder but there are some things that you can do in the public folder like uh, changing the changing the files like, like the html file you have uh, for instance changing the name the cdns like uh, adding fonts and so different things you can add on the public folder and you can uh, customize those values how the page the html part will be shown like uh, cdns adding cdns google fonts and some other files will be there uh, we'll go we'll come to src in more detail but the next part is getting your file it, it, when you install the file directly it will have uh, ignored the node modules and some uh, files that are, will not be tracked by your uh, repository so this will hold the ignored files for you uh, the other thing that you are not seeing in here but when you run npm run build you will see a build folder in your app so this is uh, another folder that you can't uh, you are not seeing now but uh, after you make the build statement you will get the chance to see or like you will have that build folder uh, which will create a production ready folder for static assets like most probably uh, you, you are done with building your app and you want to have uh, a minimalist that you can deploy in any other in, in any other place so uh, running anything RAM build will uh, create a production ready folder uh, of static assets and you can use those to deploy uh, like you can drag and drop and place it in Netlify and other places so that it will be deployed and yeah, uh, you can access it online the next part is a, uh, this src folder uh, like the, the rest of the folders are like you will interact at least once or twice something like that like doing adding google fonts or like uh, installing the package most of the time we'll do it again and again but most of the things that you will work will be on the src folder uh, like this is where like the development will take takes place and it has uh, common the structure will be like you will have this for this structure the most common will be app.js index.js index ss and uh yeah index.js will be the most common and you, you can delete the rest and the, app, the react app will still be working so the app.js is where all of your components will eventually meet which means uh, you will write your own components in other places or like in here also which, which means in, uh, in different folders or in different uh, ways so the app .js, what, what it will do is like you will like bring those all different components you have you have written and like you will put it like it's where every uh, interaction every component that you have write, written will come and be placed and index.js is it's a starting point for your application which is the, the div point like whenever we say react it is a single page render and in the html in the public folder in html you have a div so the, that the part that you will move to that or the way it's where the, the app will start running so index.js is the one that you have 
to add uh, styles for your app, you can use app processes and index process. This will be this uh, styles will apply to the application as a whole because most those two apps are the starting points of your application. So these are the common structures of the folder. So the next part is the JSX uh, part, and it is. Uh, JSX is a JavaScript extension syntax used in React to easily write HTML in JavaScript code. So if you see, uh, whenever you have, when you are creating a React app uh, or an element, you need to specify like const app, return React create element. Every time when you create, you need to specify the create element part. But instead of doing this every time when you do, uh, when you uh, are building a React app, JSX will provide you a way like, uh, like which resembles like markup uh, language, and you can create directly uh, your your HTML tags as if you are writing an HTML, and it's much more simpler and uh, easy to use. One thing that you need uh, to consider when you are using uh, JSX is you need to wrap uh, Every component that you have written in the return statement needs to be wrapped in a single tag. Either you can use fragments or div or sections, but you need to wrap it in in one place. Uh, or like the rest of the app, the, the things that you have written needs to be wrapped in a single tag. So this is the one thing that you need to consider when you are writing in JSX. Uh, the next concept is props, components, and props. Uh, components will let us. Uh, split uh, the UI components independently, so that uh, we can have we can have reusable pieces, uh, and uh, we can use like the, the components that we use to define how a button will operate or like how a page a login page will be displayed. We can use it on in different or like uh, the text area or some small components that we define in some parts. We can it can be reusable, and it is easy. It it will be maintainable also. So that we can uh, we can use in other parts also, but also like making it easy to be uh, maintainable. Uh, like conceptually, uh, the ones that you put as a component will be something like that. Uh, JavaScript functions uh, they they will accept props. We will say props like the values that you will pass. Uh, for instance, this is one. Uh, component that you will write. It's, it's the same as writing a function, but it will return a JSX element. And so the props will be, which will make the like rendering dy dynamically different parts based on the property or the property that you pass to that component. So that now if I want to present this message, like hello, prop prop name, the values that I pass as a props will be rendered based on the values that I will pass. So there are basically uh, two, two components that we can have, either functional components or class components. Uh, the first one is the functional component, the way you will define the functional component. And the next one is uh, the class components. Mostly in the previous tests, like before hooks, most mostly you will use uh, the class components to manage states and everything. Now that uh, the hooks are here, so uh, you, you can use the functional uh, parts of building React up using functional components. So when you render a component, like the one, for instance, to render this component, this is a func uh, component that you you have. And when you want to render that, you will pass something like this, like uh, now batch five will be in here. So when you render it, it will be in the value, hello, batch five will be rendered in your uh, front end or in your app. So there are ways you can render a component based on some conscience, uh, like the way you are doing if conscience in either Python or any other ways. You can also render uh, a component based on some conscience or based on some states. If, for instance, if a user is logged in, you will present a user greeting, which means welcome with his username, or if it's a guest user, you can render also guests greeting. So this, these are like components that you write either in the same file or on different uh, components or on, dif on a different file so that you can um, call them and reuse uh, these values. And the other thing is lists. Uh, like when you want to build 
like when you want to display a list of items instead of like writing out those values or most probably you, you, will, you will not know the length of the, the, the list that you will have so you will, you will need to use a way to uh, iterate over those values and display the, the list so it's basically uh, these components provide this way Let, let's say i pass an array of numbers as a props for this component and it will provide a number of lists number lists as an output so what it will do is uh, i will map through those numbers and i will display the list in here and basically the ul component will uh, be have a bulleted list of numbers based on the array of numbers i, I have passed to this prop so basically uh, the, the the main thing that you need to know in here is uh, whenever you create a list a list of items you need to, to have a key uh, which uh, identify which item have changed or added or removed and it should be unique be, uh, like the, the key that you will give for this element needs to be unique because uh, you the changes that you will make and uh, like one thing it, it will cause a, a warning but the other thing is you will you will be able to manage in individual keys based on uh, individual uh, lists based on the, the key that you passed to the component so having a key an individual like unique key for each elements or lists that you have is the way uh, it's a recommended way of doing lists so you can have a list of numbers or a list of messages or a list of people you want to display so we'll pass it as a props and you can uh, iterate over those values and you can provide them as a list so it's much more easier like when you don't know like the links of the files the links of the list that you have or when you want to display these values so one of the additions in react is uh, hooks uh, like it, it will allow you like to interact or integrate your your, your code with the life cycle uh, or the state of the functional components it basically works in the functional components in, in the previous one you will use component did mount component did update or, or something like that when you are working on the uh, on the class components but now when you are using functional components way to manage states what you will do is you will go back to using class components but now you can use directly hooks to integrate yourself or your code to uh, or either manipulate the states and the life cycle features of the function the functional components so basically there are uh, you can have many ways to, you can also create your own hooks but basically there are two that we, we want to discuss the first one is uh, state hook uh, which uh, it is much more of uh, like based, based on re-renders and everything you want to have a value that you will need uh, to control so it will allow you uh, control that, that value uh, so basically what it will do is now I declare a value in here uh, which is count count and set count uh, and I initialize that value to be a zero so whenever I click this button uh, the one that I have, I have provided it will increment and update the 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 view that i have in here so this user state returns two pair of elements like as you can see the the one is the current state which is the count and a function that lets uh, you update those uh, values so you, you you can call this function and update the value of the state or the the variable that you assign here and you will update the view for the user so basically uh, when you are, there are changes in your UI, you want to display those values. So you use set count, uh, which is to set or to update the values that you put in here, and you can make updates or and visualize that value using the variable that the, the current state that the hook provides to you. And the other one is the use effect. Uh, so most probably when you are interacting with the fronting, yeah, like you likely uh, perform data fetching uh, subscriptions or manually changing the DOM element itself like the ones that we we have seen like when you are clicking uh, buttons so this 
all things are like this all are changes that in in, in, our, in our and we call them like side effects or simply effects so because what they will do is they will affect the change in uh, in a, another component or in, in the same component itself so uh, during uh, when you are rendering the component so basically what it will do is whenever i see some changes i, I want to like to change the document title based on the count that i have so it is a change that I, it's it's performant and i want to make an update or a side effect on another place so this will help every time when the page renders it will update the document title to be you click this this number of times so based on the number of times that i have clicked it will uh, do uh, this count and you can use like when you are fetching from the database or from uh, another api you can use use effect to do this kinds of side effect uh, tasks uh, the other part is uh, like when you are working uh, if you see the the ones that arc arc v or uh, the ones that you ha you are working on it uses typescript and it's it provides you a way to define uh, like how you are you are going to interact uh, with types in, in javascript most probably uh, you can say it, it is a layer on top of javascript when you say typescript and it's uh, it's much more of a way like to catch your errors uh, when you are writing your code not on your compilation time or when you are running uh, or when in, not in the web like when you are writing your code if you want to catch your errors it, it's much more of uh, easier and it provides you a way to structure your code and because when you are defining the types that you will use in your code and you it's much more of readable and you are documenting like the, the things that you are doing and uh, it also provides you an auto completion if you define the types for like a JSON file and whenever you want to write those things it will give you an auto completion part for that so these are the, some of the advantages when you are using uh, TypeScript and one of the things that is every time that you write TypeScript it needs to be translated in, uh, before you, are, you can run in the browser so basically TypeScript, even if you write TypeScript, it will be translated to JavaScript and you will still be running that value. So you can use uh, some of the uh, resources in here and the LLM will continue with demo and some of uh, the rest of the things. Thank you. Uh, the LLM? Okay. I'll stop sharing. Okay, thank you. So. Uh... I'm Zalalam, so I'll continue uh, the tutorial from here on. So I'll try to show you like some of the projects. I hope that you can see my screen. So uh, here in a sandbox, we have a, a simple uh, React app. So it's just a to-do list. So like, but it will help you like a little bit to understand uh, how to implement React apps if you are new uh, to this library. So the to-do list just generally lists the tasks that you want to do and you have a, a close or a delete button here denoted with X and a simple uh, form input where you can add the to-do so you can normally delete the to-do so when you try to delete it will ask you a confirmation the other thing is if you have done the task you can double click and it will uh, make a strike through line on that specific task then like maybe you can add another to-do so it will pop up right in the list so when we come to the code, here we have uh, normally just uh, three files in, in the source folder. So <clears throat> the index.js is like the entry file to your React app. Oh, sorry. So here it calls 
top component in the render function. So inside the app component, we have the default function app. This is the main component. So let me explain this. So it uses the use state hook that Baracat has earlier described. So when it starts, the initial state is an array with three objects. Like these are the initial or default uh, to do tasks. So the objects are, have an ID, text, and uh, whether it's done, a Boolean uh, value. So this returns a div, which has the title with a header one. This is, corresponds to this to-do list. And another to-do list component. So this to-do list component is where it shows the list of tasks that you need to do. And finally, the form, this simple form where it has an input and a submit button. So now when we come to here, this to-do list is the, the component that is mentioned here. So it accepts the to-dos and say to-dos. So these are the two uh, elements that are returned from the use state. The first one is the actual value. The second is a function for stating this actual value. So it accepts this to-do list, accepts the to-dos and say to-dos. So here it defines uh, event handler. So this is ha ha handle, uh, <coughs> sorry, handle to toggle to do. So here, since to do is a list, it will map through them to update them. So if the ID is similar, then it will change the done. It will revert it if it is true to false, if it's false to true. Then finally it will set. So this means the state, this state will change because now we have called set to do, even though it's from another component, as long as we pass it through the props, it will change this state. But like if the to do's length is normally zero or if it's empty, it will show like a a paragraph like no to do's left. But if this condition is passed, this means it's conditional rendering. So if the length is greater than zero or if it has some element in the to do array, we'll literally like map or loop through the array and each element will be rendered as a list item inside the unordered list. So, and the list item here, there is an event handler on a double click. We will handle the toggle to do. Then here is where the change comes. On the style, we will have a line through for the text decoration. So whenever we click a task, since it, the done will be changed to true, then it will, the text decoration will be line through. Otherwise, if we double click again, it will remove it and the done will be reverted back to false. So here we have another component inside the to-do list. So every list item has a delete to-do component. So this is uh, another component by itself, which is defined here. So what it renders is a span with the X button. And here we have some styles inside uh, this JSX. So when you click, the handle daily to do will be called. So as you have seen earlier, when I click here, there will be a confirmation. So if I want to really delete this or not, so you'll choose based on that. So here it calls windows.confirm so that the dialog, the confirmation dialog will appear. So Based on whether you click yes or no, it will be a Boolean value here. So if, if it's confirmed, then it will filter out that specific ID and will give it to the set to 
So the set to do will be now a new array that will exclude that specific task. So now when we come to the add to do component that is here, it normally returns a simple form with a button of type submit here and a simple text input. So when we submit, there is a handle add to do. So what this does is like it extracts the text, then construct a to do object with an ID text and uh, by default, done will be false. Then we set the to do's. So we concat, we add this new object to the earlier to do, then uh, we remove uh, any text that we wrote here by making it an, an empty string. So basically, this is a simple to-do list. So this is like uh, how you implement a simple React app. This is like a basic uh, starting ground if you are not experienced with React. So you can play with this sandbox or any other sandbox. Uh, you can go to the React uh, documentation to see uh, a little bit more about it. So this is like a simple uh, React implementation, a single page React implementation. Uh, so you can play with it. Send a message if you want to try it. So the second project that you'll see is more related to the, this week's challenge. So I'll also put this link in the message box. Okay. So this is like an implementation of a decentralized app and it uh, uses the Algorand SDK. It helps you like, it tries to mint uh, NFTs. So you can read the description here, uh, how to install, how to start, uh, how to set like your own wave storage tokens and other things. So here is a live uh, demo. So this is what the project or the, the React page looks like. Here it has a GitHub link, uh, the mint, here it's a network selector and it has different wallet uh, connectors uh, based on Algorand. Here you can choose a file where you want to mint. And this is a, just a simple form like the name, the unit and description. And you have extra parameters here like decimals, uh, whether that it's frozen or not. So when it's frozen, that like the NFT cannot be transferred. Uh, there are different addresses here and the props. So you can explore this uh, project further, but on the Algorand side. But what I'm trying to show you here is like how they try to implement uh, the React logic, uh, not basically the Algorand one. So here, here the structure uh, looks like uh, basically as what Barakat has presented you. There is all, uh, only a build, uh, a build folder here. So it was that was built for production, but while development, you will use the, these folders, the source, the public, and the node is like when you install different packages. So if we see the package of JSON, this project uses normally Web3 storage, uh, JS SHA like for uh, encrypting uh, Algorand SDK, Algorand Session Wallets. These are like for 
connecting to Algorand. Uh, Blueprint is like a UI library made on top of uh, React. So you can use a normal uh, J6 or any other UI libraries like Ant Design or uh, Material UI. So when you go to the uh, up to T6, so by the way, this is built uh, by using TypeScript. That is why like the extensions are T6 and TS. So if you go to the return or what it renders, it uses React Router. This is like another library for managing different weights or routes in a React app. So it has enough var. These uh, components are come from the Blueprint JS. So they are ready-made components. So this nav var group corresponds to this upper section of the page. So the first group is aligned to the left. So it contains the web page name. The second is a git link and a mint. This is on the left side of the nav bar. The second is on the right side. Here we have a network selector and Algorand wallet co uh, connector. So these are the network selectors and Algorand wallet connector. So the network selector, if you go to that specific component, it's just an HTML select with some uh, lists of the configuration. So we have a config.ts uh, file where they uh, describe different, where they expose different uh, functions for the configuration key, for the active configuration uh, and other contents. So we have a JSON file. So for each network, like the main net, the test net, and the sun net, we have these three items in a, an array. So each has a, a web page, like not a web page, like a specific URL where you can connect. So for different uh, networks. So you can explore this, what the Algorand SDK exposes to you through JS. Maybe you may not use this for this challenge. You can also use the Python SDK from the back end. So, but these are the custom uh, components that this project has done. So after the nav bar inside the page, here is where we switch or change based on the route. So the home route or the root route and the mint, when we are on that uh, URL, they render this minter uh, component. When we are in the NFT route with a specific ID, it will be the NFT viewer. And the same goes to the collection with a specific uh, address. So if you try to see the Minter component, so basically if you see what it renders, what it tries to render, first is, there is an uploader. So th this one is the uploader part. So here it says like different the media, the files. So this, the files and the media all are here uh, initiated using the React user state hook. So basically then the next thing is like the form group where you have the name, the unit and the description. After that, you have another button like where you can hide or show the extra buttons. This button we change based on the state. So you can hide or uh, show the extra parameters. So here there is a collapse. So based on the state, 
it's collapsed or not. It will show this another form group. Then after that, we have like uh, another drop down, like when you can add or show extra props. So here you can add uh, another form elements dynamically. So here is where it's rendered. So then finally, we have the Mint dialog. So the Mint dialog is also defined here. So here, when the dialog is open, you can uh, display a button with a cancel or Mint. And here it shows the information like file is uploaded to here and you can click mint to create it so more or less if you if you understand the react part the next part is to explore uh, the algorand sdk the library like if you want to use it from the js part so these are the two libraries the algorand uh, sdk and the station wallet so what I tried to show you is like how they implemented using React, but you can explore the Algorand part, like the Web3 part, how to connect to wallets, the tokens, and other parts on your own. So I think this kit repo will give you a better idea how to implement this week's challenge. So more or less, uh, this is the demo. If you have any question, uh, you are welcome to ask. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, okay, that does. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> I need to ask something uh, so that I am very naive to this this environment. So okay. maybe uh, you have showed us some sample code on doing. Uh, on the code sandbox, uh, yes. some some uh, sample code. So, in in our case, uh, after doing the code, how do we run it? For example, uh, how do we get the uh, output? Here it says uh, HTTPS car six p dot csv up. So. Uh, the way we run what we have coded here that's my question you mean like in the sandbox yeah in the sun uh, are we going to do on the repo just uh, the code of those react then finally how it how it be uh, presented on the web browser that's my question so basically like this one is all all in one which means like you you have a place where you can write the code and also where you will see the output in here mm -hmm. but when you are building from your side or like when you want to build on your own you will like uh, either you can use an editor like VS code and uh, based on the process that like you, after creating the react app and everything there are scripts that you you run to like to display those uh, apps like when you npm start when you run npm start on that specific folder when you have what you have on what you have for this create for this react app it will uh, create a, a localhost 3000 basically most most probably it, it uses localhost 3000 and it will you can browse the output in the browser so what you basically you will do is you will write your codes and on your local machine using uh, like uh, 
uh, an editor and using the terminal specific to that uh, specific to that the folder app when you write npm start it will give you a way a, a way to interact in the front end in the web uh, using local host 3000 okay thank you I'm on also right. Uh, yeah, uh, is it clear? That does it? Yes, it is clear. So, uh, do do we need uh, some API? Which, uh, after all, what we do is after having this mm -hmm. interface, we will give some input to that interface. Yeah, then finally, uh, it will connect to some backend which is uh, through API or? Uh... Yeah, probably from the back end, yeah. You'll interact through using API. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, the API depends like on how you build in the back end and where you use the Algorand SDK. So like you have a, a back end tutorial in the afternoon okay so maybe for, if you have anything unclear from the back end side maybe you, you can try to ask there but basically yeah if you have an a back end you, you'll connect it using the api you'll call the apis here from the front end okay fine well, what if uh, we <clears throat> use uh, the one you have uh, presented the last one the last repo that's a uh, good uh, Arc three, as Arc three one is good. So what if we use that one and then modify to our our case uh, for for the people so who don't have a good that much knowledge on this React issue? What if we did that one to ours? Uh, yeah, like that. That depends on the instruction in your challenge document. So okay. maybe you can ask the tutors like whether you can do it this way or not so it's specific to your challenge i'm not sure like i can't give you instructions there okay fine yeah uh, you better ask the tutors okay thank you uh, Duruk, like uh, by demonstrate like uh, do you mean running tab Yeah, okay. We haven't set up like the web three storage and the uh, maybe if you can you can go back. So here it says like you need to set up uh, a web three storage uh, a storage token. So this is just only for testing. So that is why uh, it currently it doesn't work here. So you need to set up the things that that are mentioned here. So that is why we couldn't run. We only like wanted to show you like uh, how they structure the, the React in this project so that you have uh, an intermediate kind of understanding at least uh, to continue with this challenge. So I hope like you have a better understanding than me in the Web3 uh, area in the Algorand. So you, you also need to explore the Algorand SDK. So we haven't set up these storage tokens and other things. That's why currently it doesn't work on our machine. Is there any other question? All right. Then. Yeah, I think profile maybe you can explore like on the live demo that is hosted. Otherwise, you can set up the necessary tokens and other configurations, then uh, you can try it yourself. 
besides that, I think if there is no other question, Evarist, I think you, you can take over. <laughs> 